November's NSDA Public Forum topic is Resolved, On Balance, the Benefits of the Internet of Things Outweigh the Harms of Decreased Personal Privacy. So let's get this out of the way at the front. This is not a great topic. This is not a balanced topic. There are a lot of analyses out there talking about what the topic should be or how to debate the topic area. I'm going to try to get this out of the way at the front and then spend the rest of the video talking about what the actual topic is and how to debate under the topic that we are going to have rather than why the topic is bad or what would be a better topic. Going to break down wording, talk about common arguments, talk about optional strategies for both sides, talk about necessary arguments for both sides. So. For starters, this topic is asking, on balance, the benefits of thing X outweigh the harms of thing Y. It's not necessarily saying that benefits of thing X outweigh X's harms to Y. It's asking us to compare two textually unrelated things, though some teams are going to try to make those related by a different interpretation of on balance. We'll get to that in a moment, but as it is, it's not asking about the benefits of the Internet of Things versus the harms of the Internet of Things. It's either asking about the benefits of the Internet of Things versus one potential harm of the Internet of Things, or it's asking about all the benefits of the Internet of Things versus all of the harms of loss in privacy, whether or not those benefits trade off with privacy, whether or not that loss of privacy comes from the IoT. So with that out of the way, let's look at wording. So, on balance, typically isn't used in resolutions that also say outweigh. You usually aren't going to see both of those because on balance asks us to weigh two things against each other and figure out which one outweighs the other. The only thing that on balance is really going to do in this resolution is provide some kind of implicit textual basis for pro teams who want to argue that Khan cannot make arguments about privacy that are not on balance related to the Internet of Things. Usually, if a topic wording committee wants to have this, they use the phrase, when in conflict, but that's not what happened here. On balance generally isn't going to play too much of a role in the round because either way you have to balance two things against each other to weigh them, but it is worth mentioning. So it asks about the benefits of the Internet of Things. And the Internet of Things is a term of art that was originally coined in 1999. It refers to adding devices, locations, workers, what have you, to networks, having them all interconnected with each other and sharing data. Is a laptop part of the Internet of Things? I mean, yes it is, but it's not really the part this resolution is talking about. Is a smartphone? More borderline, but still probably not what the resolution is talking about. Obviously, it is part of the Internet of Things. Otherwise, things like smart cars, smart refrigerators, these would not actually be able to interface with the Internet if the actual computers weren't. But generally speaking, when we're talking about Internet of Things, the purposes of this topic, we are talking about those people, places, things that do not have internet communication as their primary function, but which use internet connections to augment their primary function. So yes, there's not really too much of a difference between an older laptop and a smart refrigerator. People have managed to get intelligent toasters to run Linux. People have played games on the operating systems for home environment systems, on refrigerators, etc. They are computers. The computer in your car is more powerful than the computer that you had in your house six years ago. That said, these aren't the kinds of computers that are used primarily for everyday administrative tasks or primarily for communication. Their main role is not internet access. So on one end of the spectrum, we have something like a smart car. On the other end of the spectrum, we have something like a Chromebook. One's sole function is to connect with the internet. One has a primary function, which being networked can potentially augment. So that's kind of how those interact. When we're talking about the internet of things, 
we might not be talking about privately networked things. This certainly creates some kind of uniqueness defense that Khan can talk about in rounds. The idea that things could be networked and share data, but do so in a way that is more private, that is not publicly accessible, that is not on a server accessible to everybody, might technically not be part of the Internet of Things, but again, that is up for debate. So then it asks if these benefits outweigh the harms of decreased personal privacy. And again, it's the benefits of A outweigh the harms of B, not the benefits of A outweigh A's harms to B, and not the benefits of A outweigh the harms of A. So some teams are going to use on balance to try to say that the benefits must be ones that create privacy problems, or that the harms to privacy must be ones that come from the Internet of Things. Also, keep in mind that it says the harms of decreased personal privacy. And I think that Khan really needs to hold the line on this topic about we need to take the fairer interpretation. If two interpretations both have some textual justification, we need to look at the one that is fairer because that makes for better debate. Because if we look at things purely from a framer's intent standpoint, I mean, First off, some of the framers have said that they wish we would debate the spirit of this topic rather than the exact wording that they picked. That is another rant for another time. I am not going to add link to this analysis with that. But framers' intent means asking why is each word included? Why do we say on balance when we already say outweigh? Why do we say decrease personal privacy instead of just decrease privacy? Why do we say the harms of decreased personal privacy instead of just outweigh the harms. And the trouble is, the more specific this gets, the harder life gets for Khan. Khan can accept that they can only talk about privacy harms, at least as an internal link to other impacts, as long as Khan also makes it pretty clear that they d get those harms de facto because the resolution is implying that there is harms to personal privacy, and the question is how much. That said, the reason the word personal was added to the resolution is a little bit trickier for Khan to have a justification for, other than, well, it's just there to clarify privacy but not to restrict arguments. Because the interpretation that Pro wants for this is that personal privacy is put in there specifically because they did not want to talk about cybersecurity, they did not want to talk about the privacy of companies' data, of countries' data, they only wanted to talk about personal information. And the reason that this was put in here was to further limit Con down beyond just the harms of the Internet of Things and beyond just the harms of the Internet of Things to privacy, but specifically to the harms of your personal privacy rather than harms to cybersecurity writ large. Khan really can't allow this if they want to win debates and needs to talk about reciprocity when explaining how these different terms are interpreted. So basically, any time that Khan gives something up, it should give them something else, or it should make Pro give something up too. Now, these specific trades aren't necessarily good for Khan, but giving Pro half of it for free is outright bad for Khan. So, for instance, Khan might say, Pro is restricted by where the benefits can come from, but not what those benefits can be. Khan is restricted by what their harm can be, but not where that harm can come from. So, Pro can talk about any benefit of the Internet of Things, but that's all they can talk about. Khan can talk about every harm, as long as it is a decrease to personal privacy, regardless of whether it is uniquely caused by the Internet of Things. So that would be one example of reciprocity. Another example of reciprocity that we might want to look at on this particular topic is the idea of actual versus potential harms. So for instance, Pro, if they get to claim benefits that haven't happened yet, then Con gets to claim harms that haven't happened yet. But if Pro wants to say that Khan can only talk about harms of personal privacy that have already happened or that are happening right now, that would mean that Pro can only talk about benefits that have already happened or are happening right now. 
The trouble is, either one of these still kind of favors pro. I think if the resolution just asked if benefits outweigh harms, it would be slightly pro favored. I think that when you narrow down these harms, it puts Khan in a tricky position, but also means that you can pretty safely assume whether you're debating under NCFL rules or NSDA rules, the Khan team is going to be the team that gets to speak second. And that lets you make some of this back, because what Khan can do and what Khan needs to rely on in some cases is just turns. Generally, these are not going to be link turns, but these are going to be case-specific impact turns. Pro needs to show that benefits outweigh harms. So for instance, if Pro proves that the Internet of Things is going to make a trillion dollars in new economic output, and Khan says, well, actually it's going to cost $1.1 trillion in terms of opportunity costs, that means that the total net benefit is negative 0.1 trillion, negative 100 billion, which means that it's very easy for the harms of decreased personal privacy to outweigh that. So it's not always going to be simple and numerical, but you will often see pro teams trying to go ahead and read a lot of impacts and spend most of their effort on the link and simply assume the impacts are good. Khan needs to have some flexibility when they are speaking second to be able to adapt their framework or their case as well as their rebuttal to be able to impact turn what Pro says. So if one of the benefits is agriculture, one of the drawbacks might be agricultural insecurity or over-centralization. Generally speaking, the drawback is going to be a fairly generic impact turn with one or two cards that make it specific to particular pro arguments. These drawbacks, oddly enough, are just other drawbacks of the Internet of Things that would normally go into the harms category if the resolution didn't specify down, but this is a way that con teams can try to bring them into the round anyway. So, for instance, one category is the one I just talked about, over-centralization, single points of vulnerability, being able to not just be attacked by cyber attacks, but being more vulnerable to a single accident, a single error in programming, having a lot of communications that can all be sabotaged intentionally or inadvertently by a single miscommunication. The second is just impact turning the efficiency that Pro is talking about. This is going to create a lot more efficiency and a lot more productivity, but it's probably going to do so at the expense of jobs. A pro team would love to be able to say that we'll transition to a post-scarcity economy, and that's going to be awesome. The con team is going to probably want to talk a lot more about what the backlash will look like from a lot of people not having jobs anymore, or many fewer people being needed to do something now that a bunch of networked systems can do it instead. There are many jobs that only require a human hand on the controls or human eyes on the field because the technology can't communicate and can't make those kinds of managerial decisions, which between advances in the IoT and advances in AI certainly will not stay the case. In that sense, we actually kind of get close to the original topic area of Industrial Revolution 4.0, which is kind of cool, because again, I think this is a very interesting area to talk about. It's just not a very competitive topic to do so under. So when we're talking about harms of decreased personal privacy for Khan, there's a couple burdens that have to be met first. A pro team can argue that a right to privacy does not exist. A pro team can argue that harms to privacy are not really able to be objectively evaluated. A pro team can argue that in the information age, in the 21st century, publicity is a more valuable concept than privacy, and thinking of things in terms of privacy which wouldn't exist anyway is overrated. Pro can non-unique a lot of different con arguments. The trouble with each of these three approaches is if Pro wins them, they win the round right there. Because you can't have harms of decreased personal privacy under any of those arguments. On the other hand, 
if Khan invests an equal amount of time into these, and if Khan wins them, then that does not mean Khan wins the debate, it means Khan gets to have a debate in the first place. So these are various gateway issues that pro teams can bring up that they can win on but cannot lose on, and that Khan must devote similar time to answering because they will lose on them but they can't win on them. All they can do is win them enough to get to make other arguments that they can win with. So a lot of the benefits that Pro is going to bring up split into several broad categories. These are just more efficient industry, better economy, and better practical solutions for everyday life. The last one of these is probably the one that relies the least on the IoT in particular, rather than advancing technology in general, and could be substituted for with offline databases, could be substituted for with better kinds of AI, could be developed eventually without the IoT. But all of the arguments that Pro makes kind of should be asking those questions about, should be trying to challenge the uniqueness of when Pro is talking about, for instance, better agriculture, the question is how much of this actually relies on live communication right now? I think that in general, when a Pro team is constructing their case, they probably want at least one framework contention somewhere in between the two can be phrased as either depending on your preference depending on your circuit that's basically about there not being a right to privacy or there not being a way to weigh hard to decrease personal privacy or there not being a way to measure privacy or the concept of privacy as the con authors articulate it being outdated in an age of publicity I think that's a good time trade for Pro to have. I think that it can be an outright win if the con team mishandles it, and I think that the vast majority of paid evidence services aren't going to have adequate responses to it. The second thing that I think a Pro team wants is an ongoing benefit that is tangible, that is happening right now, and that is measurable. And this can be in terms of energy savings. This can be in terms of benefits to climate. This can be in terms of waste reduction. This can be in terms of a lot of different things. Personally, I would err towards the side of some of the IoT's benefits towards safety, towards search and rescue, because you can actually look at a tangible number of lives saved from those. You might want to go with something like the IoT allows people who report their cars as stolen and whose cars then get into high-speed chases with police to have those cars manually, slowly, slowed down so that there isn't an accident, so that there isn't any deaths, and that any of these, whether you pick that example or the previous ones, saves a tangible number of lives, and that benefit outweighs some incommensurate amount of decreased personal privacy, which may or may not have been private in the first place, and which may or may not be acted on anyway. The second thing that I think a pro team wants on their argument wish list is something potential, some benefit that you could claim of the Internet of Things. Because, frankly, if Khan is restricted to only talking about loss of personal privacy the IoT has already caused, then it's difficult for them to outweigh and win. Which means a lot of Khan teams are going to talk about, just on a more philosophical level, the potential harms that could be created from dystopian decreases in personal privacy in the future. Trouble is, if Khan gets that, Pro gets any utopian benefits of the Internet of Things in the future. And even if you just look at, for instance, how we handle space stations in the status quo, there's a lot of networked communicating systems that communicate with each other, that communicate with the ground, that communicate with different parts of the station that don't rely on people manually going there and inputting data that are very often self-regulating in a lot of ways and will alert ground control or will alert manned parts of the station when necessary. 
the ISS is actually a pretty good example of some of the more interesting things the Internet of Things can do. Space colonization is probably the biggest and farthest out pro impact that can come up on this topic, but at the same time, it is a very hard one for Khan to outweigh if Khan makes the round about potential future benefits versus potential future harms, either in terms of total lives, either in terms of risks of extinction, either in terms of solving for various scenarios that rely on resources, any of these are things that Pro can access if they go big like that. So I think that Pro wants one frameworkish contention, one concrete status quo contention, and one big picture hypothetical contention. <coughs> this does not mean that all Pro cases have to have all of these, but it means the successful pro cases will tend to have a mix of these. So, how about Khan? What does Khan want to do? Well, first off, turns. All the turns. Khan wants to turn as much as possible. Khan wants to argue that fairness is more important than literal fidelity to the wording of the topic. Khan wants to argue that the right to privacy is necessary to dignity, that dignity is having a meaning to life, and that without having a meaningful life, you can't really gain any of these benefits. Khan wants to talk about this in terms of the judge's unfamiliarity with the topic being an asset for Khan. If the judge is confused what the Internet of Things does, then it's very easy for a con team to make the judge skeptical about any benefits the pro teams are claiming. If the pro team is forced into the position of teaching the judge what the Internet of Things is, while the con team gets to spend their time explaining why privacy violations are bad, then con can certainly come out ahead. Con can also take the, what I think is going to be more stock route of pretending the word personal doesn't exist, and just talking about how cyber attacks are bad and cybersecurity is good, the trouble is that most of these either aren't harms for the Internet of Things, or if they are, are more harms of server over-centralization than of the concept of an IoT in the first place. When you are con on this topic, you need to figure out before your first speech what kind of pro you're up against, and how you want to adapt to that. Con teams that adapt well can put Pro on the defensive early on, can force Pro's rebuttal into an uncomfortable position despite speaking first, and can take advantage of offense later on. Con teams that don't adapt are just going to get massively outcarded by overviews in Pro's rebuttal or summary, which non-unique pretty much everything Con tries to say, and then comes down to the fact that these benefits are actually tangible, measurable, and weighable, whereas these harms could occur anyway or aren't directly caused by the IoT. Overall, this is a tough topic to be con on. It's not insurmountable, but at the same time, if you win the flip, I would pick Pro rather than picking second. I think that Pro is a substantially stronger side in this topic, especially in terms of the literature base that exists, especially in terms of the comparisons between the two, and especially in terms of low-risk, high-reward arguments, which Khan doesn't really have similar analogs to. For those reasons, if you have the option, I'd probably spend more of your time doing framework extensions, doing practice rounds, focusing on the con side, because if you want to win a tournament in November, what's going to separate you from other teams that clear and are lucky is being able to win even when you are con. That's about all I have on this topic for the time being. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. It is a big topic. It is a complex topic. I'm certainly amenable to doing a follow-up. There are specific arguments that people want to talk about more. But for now, this is what we have for November. Now we have to try to make it into some kind of salvageable debates that somehow have Clash without that Clash guaranteeing a pro win. 
Thanks for listening. Stay tuned for the next one.